Hello, everybody. This is International Master Jesse Cry, and today I'd like to speak about why Shaq plays thinner. One of the first things we hear when we start learning the game of chess is the following. Develop your pieces and control the center. Now, that's hopefully the moment we stop playing the moves H4 and A4 and play something more like E4 and D4. E4 and D4 control the center, and they also enable our pieces, like our bishop and queen, to come out. Um, so developing our pieces seems to make a whole lot of sense. So imagine you're the coach of a basketball team. Not developing your pieces would be like forcing your players to all sit on the bench. Right? And this is like our bench on the chess board. All our pieces are in the starting position. They're all on the bench. But why should we control the center? It turns out to be very funny. Try asking a player who is higher rated than you are this question. Why should we control the center? It's kind of amusing. You see, they'll usually become annoyed, maybe even aggressive towards you. When I ask this question, why should we control the center, I'm usually dismissed or laughed at even. And they always come back. If I force them to give a reason, they say something like, because you need to develop your pieces and control the center, stupid. The thing is, is that it's a kind of key assumption in everyone's thinking that the center is important. And everyone thinks it's clear and simple. But you see, when you ask the question, you kind of show that this foundation of their thinking, which is the foundation of all of their chess beliefs in a way, stands on kind of shaky ground. So, what is so magical about these four squares in the center? And how will playing this philosophical game help us become better chess players? Okay, I'd like to give an analogy to help explain this, because it's not so easy. Imagine we're in a basketball game, and the game we play won't have any silly rule against standing in the area around the basket for three seconds. We have Shaquille O'Neal on our team. This guy is huge. His foot is bigger than the average guy's chest. Where should we put him? It seems to make sense to put him in front of the basket. Now, from here, he'll be best able to directly attack the basket on offense, like that. And on defense, he'll help us prevent the opponent from attacking our king. That much seems obvious. But we also need to see that from the center, they will also be able to pass off the ball on offense. Could be to the side, could be in any direction. When he's in the center, he can pass the ball off, and therefore he controls the offensive movement on the board. And on defense, similarly, he'll be able to block passes going from one side of the board to the other. So from the center, He's able to control the movement of the ball. And this is also going to happen in chess. That from the center, we can control the movement, both helping us and trying to disturb the movement of our opponent's pieces. So in basketball, if you stop the opposing team from making layups, they'll be forced to take low percentage shots from the outside. Right? They'll have to shoot from a very far distance and those shots are harder to make. In chess, however, we don't have percentages. It either works or it doesn't. And in chess, if you don't have control of the center, an attack on the wing, on the side of the board, will not be successful. Let's look at a practical example. I was white here against international master Pilgard from Denmark. And white has a bit of an advantage due to the fact that these pawns around his king are a little bit weakened. And due to that, his king position is also a little bit weakened. 
But really, I don't think it's that bad for him. He has a lot of central pieces still. His queen has influence in the center. His rook is bearing down in the center in particular. And my bishop on g2 isn't doing a whole lot. It's kind of blunted by this pawn on c6. So, I think here I made a very instructive mistake that I see a lot of beginning level players do. What I did is I smelled blood on the king side. I said to myself, look at those juicy weaknesses on the king side. I need to attack them. And this is kind of interesting, this game, to me, because it turns out that even though it looks like all the preconditions for an attack for white are there, it was an incorrect decision. And the reason it was incorrect is that I'm not paying attention to the center. At the moment, black has really good potential for central control on the D file. And we'll see that this is kind of interesting because this uh, pressure on the D file will help him defend and make an attack against me as well. And this is the key thing, is that from the center, you can, like I said, like in basketball, you can block your opponent from moving to wing to wing, and you can make an attack, a direct attack from the center to the opponent's king much more easily. So in this position, I should have immediately played rook to d1 just to challenge the d file. I cannot let my opponent have that beautiful central influence. Instead, I went straight for the king, which was a mistake because it was an attack on the wing. Knight e4, it should be 7. Queen e2, I'm going over to the king immediately. I need to play rook over to clench the d file. Watch what my opponent does. Very instructive. He just plays rook to d7. What is he doing? Well, after I play queen h5, he just plays rook d8. So let's take stock of what's happened in the last couple of moves. I've managed to, I've invested my time in moving my queen over to the king's side. Where it's true, she's going to be able to create some dangerous threats to the black king. But on the other hand, she's not doing anything at all in the center of the board. In the meantime, it's like his center has grown from this five foot five kind of pipsqueak guy to this huge seven foot monster. And he's bearing down all on my default. Now, I think most beginning players will ask themselves, well, look, that's nice, this whole defile business, but the king is over on g8, and that's the important thing. But in fact, it's not. The center turns out to be much more important than all that. And I'm hoping this game will help us show that. Okay, so um, in this position, I need to keep my attack going, and I played g4. Um, let's just see. If I play queen h6, he can play knight g4 to knock me out. Nope. So I play g4, intending to play g5 and open the black in position up. Let's watch what black does. He again plays centrally. He's answering an attack on the wing with an attack in the center. He plays knight d3, a nice multi-purpose move. So, this knight usually is referred to as an octopus when it gets to either d3 or e3 because it controls so many squares from there. And the other, in particular, he's hitting my f2 pawn, which we'll see is a problem. He's threatening to go to knight f4. And maybe the nicest thing about all of this is he can bring his queen to e5, further centralizing his position. And using that, he'll use that central control to actually defend his king. So I pushed on, queen h6, queen e5. So from the center, he's going to defend his weakness. I pushed him. He just calmly took my pawn. Notice that it looks very ominous for the black king. And during the game, I thought I was doing fine still. I still hadn't realized that I was the one in danger. 
not black who's in danger here. Black central control will give him enough opportunities, both on the offense and the defense, to come out on top here. Okay, so I decided to push on. It's hard to see what else I'm going to do if I don't play this move g5. So my opponent correctly played knight to f4. Good move. So now we see the effects of this horrible knight in the center. If the rook takes, then queen a1, and he's also threatening. I can't play like a move like gf because he'll just play queen takes g2 checkmate. So here, it was only here that I began realizing that I was in serious trouble. But still, I thought, okay, I still have a big attack going, right? But what, let's look and see what happens. Rook f4, queen a1, bishop f1. So I'm still hoping to mobilize all of my forces against the black king. My opponent played a very good move here. Rook d1. So notice that his central control is going to be moved directly into an attack against my king. So it's kind of funny. We look at the very beginning position, where we started from, and it seemed like white's king had absolutely no problem at all. But the problem is, is when your opponent has control of the center, it's going to be so much easier for him to conduct an attack upon your king. So... I've got real problems here. He's going to do things like rook f1 and then queen d4, and I don't have any clear-cut threats against his king. So I play g6, still attempting to mate him. I think if I play gf, he's just going to play something like bishop f8, and if I remember correctly, there's nothing I can do. He's just going to hold the fort, primarily because of his central control. And here, my opponent made a mistake, which let me out, so to say. Um, but how he could have played is very instructive, I think, to this whole question of the center that we've been discussing today. Watch how my what my opponent could have done here is he could have just really neglected his, my attack on his king because the central control would be so strong. So what he should have played here is just simply have taken my pawn, which seems suicidal, but it's not suicidal if you realize the power of the center. Queen g6, king f8. Looks suicidal. Looks like I'm just going to rip him apart. But watch what happens if I try to do that with knight f6. Well, then what he's going to do is, is he's going to start attacking me. He's going to play rook f1. I have to take. Bishop c5, check. King g2. Rook d2, check. I'm in a horrible mess. I'm the one that's going to get mated. Not, <laughs> it's not white. And it all came out of the center. That's the important thing to understand. And the other thing is, clearly here I can understand my opponent. Um, he basically gave me the opportunity. He played safely and gave me an opportunity out of this whole mess. Um, but I think once you have faith in the center, you you could have played like I just did with taking that pawn and um, letting your intuition go to this level where you say, look, this central control is going to be more critical than any attack on my king. As it was, I got kind of lucky. played rook f1, rook f1, queen d4, and now I have to retreat the knight. And now he has to take the pawn. You see, so he made my knight retreat, but now now I can't force a draw because he can't really, he can't escape. He can't go to the d file because I'll always have rook d1, and if he goes to the e file, my own rook e1 is going to be scary. So, after these kinds of moves, we agree to a draw. So, what this game taught me, and I'm hoping the listeners out there get this, is that the center is the basis for all defense and offense. What we saw in this game was a case where it looked like White had all the preconditions for an attack on the wing. And 
the mistake I made was I let my mind be on the wing instead of the center. Remember always, you need to have your mind in the center first and your eye on the wing. It's from the center that you'll be able to conduct your attack out onto the opponent's king. This is International Master Jesse Cry, hoping you've enjoyed this discussion of the magical four squares in the center. Bye-bye.